Can you read to me the nameplate? Judge Ebony K. Williams. So the only thing that matters in this particular courtroom is how I see it. I am from North Carolina by way of Louisiana with some West Coast cool and a New York edge. Do we have a problem, ma'am? No, I don't, Your Honor. Equal justice is all about the most important values of our country, freedom, integrity, and those are the things that I'm striving for. Ma'am, you run your household. This man gets to run his. I decided to become an attorney and pursue the law. I wanted to be a voice for the voiceless. This court can not hold this woman accountable. People from all sectors of life, black, white, purple, gay, straight, queer, and that's what Equal Justice with Judge Ebony K. Williams is all about. Josephine Tyler claims her new neighbor was so noisy that she had no choice but to move out so she could get some peace. Carl Blunder says he tried to be a good neighbor, but all Miss Tyler did was complain. Well, good afternoon. I see Josephine Tyler here as my plaintiff. Yes. Carl Blunder as the defendant. Mr. Blunder, I see you've got a witness with you, Mr. Jeffrey Reese. Okay, he's been sworn in. Elijah? He has been sworn in, Your Honor. Excellent. Okay, Miss Tyler, it looks like you're suing for $4,800, you're saying that this man was your neighbor and he was too noisy and forced you to move. So uh, tell us exactly why you're in court today. Yes, thank you, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. um, I, um, I moved into a quiet neighborhood because I like quiet and um, I had been teaching but I lost my job during the pandemic. So Sorry I started an online teaching in my apartment and everything was fine when um, until this Carl moved in, and then I um, I had to move out. I mean, I okay. So give me um, some more background here, Miss Tyler. So how long had you how long had you lived in your apartment before the defendant moved in? I lived there for three years, and I had oh, wow. a really nice neighbor, Barbara. She was elderly, but we were friends. So that Barbara lived in this unit before Carl yes. moved in. Okay. Yes, it's a duplex, and she was so sweet and quiet. She would like knit and read, and she slept a lot, but we did favors for each other, so okay. I really liked her. So that was a good situation, and you, I noticed you said duplex, Ms. Tyler, mm -hmm. so you two share a wall? Yes, yes, okay. so it's okay. really important that the neighbor is quiet. Got it, and you're saying during the pandemic, as many of us had to pivot and figure out how to still have an income, right. you smartly uh, chose to launch your educational offerings online, Yes, yeah, so I work from home. Got it. So now it's even more important. important that you have quiet. Exactly. So you get it. You really get it. No, Thank you. yeah, I, I do. But, Thank but you. tell me a bit about the types of noise you're saying that the defendant caused. Um, well, I, if I could just say about Barbara, um, okay, I don't go back to Barbara. Okay. Yeah, I mean, what I, happened? Where is Barbara? She, um, she, unfortunately, she on. yeah, she. Okay. Um, Yes, she passed away, okay. and um, I had to be there when my landlord found out about it. For me, it was really dramatic, mm. it, you know, it, and so that was Oh, already... this is the landlord. That's the witness? Okay, Jeffrey, that's what Mr. yes, Reese is. yes. Okay. So, um, so that was like a whole change for me, you know, mm -hmm. losing Barbara and not having that friendship, that neighbor that I really cared about, sure. and we lived well, like, together in the duplex. Mm -hmm. um, it also was horrific to just, you know, Walk in there. I I, I don't know. Um, so I. You oh, know, so you found the body? Is that what you're telling me? I court? went in with. Um, yes, I had to. Um, oh no. There was a smell. There was a just. Just oh disgusting Lord. Okay. Smell, and I haven't heard from her. So this is a, a really bad scenario. Okay. So yeah. may Miss Barbara rest in peace. She's yes. gone on to glory. Yes. Okay. Yes, sweet lady. Sure. Okay, um, she's upset. Yeah. Go ahead. And go yes. ahead, ma'am. Yeah. And then. Um, and I am sorry for your loss. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And so. Um, I don't know, I was just dealing with that, and mm -hmm. then um, within two weeks, he had the apartment ready to rent, and then Carl moved in, and my life was literally, like, turned upside down. Like, mm. Life as I knew it was over. Was over. And tell me, again, the, the types of, I want to understand, Miss Tyler, what were you hearing that was so disruptive? Okay, well, let me just say that yes. I'm a reasonable person. You can see that, right? Like, I'm... Well, I, the jury's still out, but we'll okay, find out. Okay, okay, Go but I'm, I'm, you know, I try to be professional. I mean, when mm -hmm. he moved in, I came over with a fruit basket. Just, okay. you know, I wanted to make a connection. Neighborly thing to do. Right, Got and it. he seemed kind of rude, kind of loud. And to my surprise, he had two large dog, dogs. I okay. mean, they're huge. And then um, a parrot, which was on his shoulder, which was squawking really, really loud. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, 
I mean, I just basically mentioned that I work from home and I need it quiet and he seemed to comply. It wasn't going to be a problem. And that's how the whole thing started. Okay. Let me hear from the defendant here. Mr. Blunder, let me know how accurate is this picture that the plaintiff is painting? Well, let me start, Your Honor, by saying that I moved to Stanford from Upper Manhattan. Okay. And my apartment there was not satisfactory. It was very small, and for the rent that I was paying, it, it just wasn't a good... New York City for you. Right. Yeah. It just wasn't a good situation for me and my pets. Uh, in fact, uh, for the bailiff, I have a few photos of them Please. for you, Your Honor, just to see what we're talking about. Thank you. It's two two-year-old German Shepherds okay. and then a five-year-old uh, blue and gold macaw. Oh, beautiful. This is the parrot? Yes. Okay. Beautiful bird. I, I see these two... Uh... Pups, okay, but you said they're how old? They're two years old now. Okay, and how much do they weigh a piece? Oh gosh, sometimes they feel like 50 pounds. Okay. I can't tell you off the top of my head. Okay, I'm so but sorry. they're not five pounds. Okay. No. Coming up on Equal Justice. Singing, trying to. Oh. I'm just learning. If you'll be in the Los Angeles area and want to bring your case to court, call 1-888-552-6878. This is Equal Justice. Equal Justice is back with the case of Josephine Tyler, who blames neighbor Carl Blunder for ruining her peace and quiet. All right, and now I see that there's some emails in here for my review. Yes. There are, in fact, some emails. These are the emails that I received from Josephine while I was living there detailing the complaints mm -hmm. that she had with me. I moved into the duplex. I... Oh, hold on, ma'am. Go ahead. <sighs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. I moved into the duplex after I'd come to help my cousin, Robert, move into a Stanford uh, house. Okay. And I just fell in love with the place. It was the amount of space that I needed. It let me live in a nice city where I could still have a nightlife, but also there was enough space for my animals. It had dog. a nice backyard, okay. two-story duplex, everything I could want. Okay, let me see these emails here. So this is from the plaintiff here. She says, hi, Carl. You've been making noise ever since you moved in here. I can hear you playing guitar, singing, your dogs barking, and parrot talking. Does the, does the bird talk, sir? Yes. Okay. Excuse me, Your Honor. Ma'am, ma'am, let me review the evidence. I will get back to you. Okay. I can hear your loud TV and your fire alarm going off. I am emailing you to ask if you could please keep the noise level to a minimum. I have lived here for many years and have not had any trouble with the other tenant. Thank you. Signed, Josephine Tyler. Now let's see your response. You say, I am so sorry to hear that you're having a, a rough time. I leave the windows open for my pet so they can have fresh air. I'll stop the terrible singing and I won't play guitar after hours. Thank you. Did you adhere to that? As best as I could, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, Le go yes, ma'am. Oh, I'm sorry, Your Honor. There, he didn't adhere to that. That's the problem. If he had, then maybe maybe we could have... Maybe we wouldn't be here today. Maybe we wouldn't be. Okay. But, um, hours run reasonable. I, I, okay. I actually... At this point, I want to hear from this witness. Sir, please approach. Uh, you said he was sworn in, Elijah? Yes, ma'am. Okay, uh, sir, Mr. Jeffrey Reese, you are the landlord of this property. That's correct, Your Honor. Jeffrey Reese, landlord, um, and also owner of the duplex. You own, that's what I wanted to get clear. Thank you, sir. So you actually own the property, and you are leasing to both of these tenants. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, formerly to Josephine and presently to Carl. Mm -hmm. Now, when you say formally, uh, uh, the court is concluding that Ms. Josephine has moved out at this point? She, well, thank goodness she has moved on, Your Honor. Okay, so I've got one question for you, uh, Mr. Reese, and this is really the important one. Per the local ordinance around the decibel, were you guys coming in below or above the local ordinance? Your Honor, I'm going to go ahead and say we were right in the middle of okay. the local ordinance. Mm -hmm. but, you know, neither, neither one. Right in the middle, which to me is perfectly fine. Reasonable. So you, deter you determined as the property owner, ma'am, you determined as the property owner that the decibel was reasonable. Yes, I did, Your Honor. Yes, okay. I did. I have one more question for you, and then I'm going to get to you, ma'am, Ms. Tyler. When you vetted, uh, because as all property owners do, before we uh, rent or lease our properties, which are investments, those are assets, Amer American dream type of thing, you've got to vet each tenant carefully, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so when you met with Mr. Blunder here, you knew he had two dogs, you knew he had the parrot, you knew he played the guitar. 
Did you have any concerns around the quiet enjoyment of the other tenants' use of the property? Not at all, Your Honor. That's a perfect point, and it, it is. Well, less... I, te I tend to make those. <laughs> Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, and, and that tenant is in the lease to comply with all uh, noise ordinances. Correct. Stated specifically. Yeah, and you felt comfortable around that. Yes, I His did. His ability to do that. Yes, I did. Okay, so now let's get back to you, Ms. Tyler. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, what he's saying is false. I mean, I, I, I actually have a noise log of everything that happened because it was that upsetting to me. The, I mean, his team... Go ahead and give that to my bailiff okay, ma'am so I can, I, the court can okay, consider it. And, and what he's saying about, I don't know what he's talking about, meter or something. I actually recorded the sounds oh. because it was just so loud day and night, night and day. There was no peace. Very impeccable with your recording skills here, Miss Tyler. Not a woman to <sighs> overlook the details, I see. Well, I mean, I'm this is down to, yeah, you, no, no kidding. This is down to the minute and the, and the second. Uh -huh. Okay, so you said to me that you've got a recording? Yes, I, okay, I submitted let's, let's it let to let the, the court bailiff here. For, um, yeah, because we're kind of talking abstractly. I want to hear it. Okay. Singing, trying to. Oh. I'm just learning. Okay. Well, now that was a little bit loud. Uh, yeah. That was a little bit loud there, uh, Mr. Blunder. What do you have to say for yourself? I will say, in the emails you have over there regarding the volume, I understand that some of those were very loud and full credit. I also understand that she works as a teacher and that she needs... From home. From home. Right. And I get it. The pandemic wreak havoc on all of us. Correct. When she let me know that the volume wasn't up to her standards, I stopped. So That's you're not saying, true. Yep. Sorry, I'm sorry. Point of clarification from the defendant. Are you telling the court that what we heard is representative of your volume originally, and you're saying that it was turned down after the email request from the plaintiff? Is that what you're, is that what you're saying? Yes. Coming up on Equal Justice. These dogs are barking all day long mm -hmm. and the parrot and the breaking point was the alarm going off for like right. 10 minutes straight, the alarm going off. Okay. And I didn't know if the building was gonna burn down. I, I just didn't know what to do. So I called the fire department. This is Equal Justice. Equal Justice is back with the case of Josephine Tyler, who blames neighbor Carl Blunder for ruining her peace and quiet. Miss Tyler? That's not true. That's false. Um, he left his, went to work, left the windows open so I could hear the parrot. Well, he explained the windows open, ma'am. You can't expect the animals to be stuffed in the, a well, unit. They just, these dogs are barking all day long mm. and the parrot and the breaking point was the alarm going off for like right. 10 minutes straight, alarm going off. Okay. And I didn't know if the building was gonna burn down. I, I just didn't know what to do. So I called the fire department. I was in the shower. I had to run out in my shower towel oh. and deal with the fire department in front of the whole neighborhood. It was humiliating. What? Yeah, I ran out there and Carl was insulting me. Just oh. totally insulting me, verbally attacking me. Okay, hold on, ma'am. Let's ease it with the dramatics. Okay, go ahead, sir. She'd been harassing me forever. The entire time I'd been living there, even after I reconciled with her about the sound and I did my best to turn things down. Mm -hmm. Still, with the emails and the complaints and the logs and dealing with everything, and finally, after that fire department fiasco... You lost your cool. Okay, yes. I got it. Okay, and I do see that the... Defendant's witness is nodding in agreement to the frequency of Ms. Tyler's complaint. I'm in total agreement, Your Honor. Okay, all right. Ms. Tyler, let me get to this. Mm -hmm. At some point, you say, no more. I can't work like this. I can't live like this. You leave the unit. I had to. I had no choice. I mean, Tell I, me why you say you had no choice. I can, because you it's just my serenity. It's my uh, peace of mind. I wasn't sleeping at night. Okay. When I'm trying to teach, these sounds going off. <laughs> he was making drilling. So you, you broke your lease, ma'am? I, I, I had to, to keep teaching, and I now I lost my deposit. Coming up on Equal Justice. You did break the lease, ma'am. I did, but I reached out to both of them, and I was back and forth to my land, to Jeffrey, to Carl, and it was back and forth, back and forth, and neither one was helping. No answer would have satisfied you. This is Equal Justice. 
Equal Justice is back with the case of Josephine Tyler, who blames neighbor Carl Blunder for ruining her peace and quiet. That's what I was going to say. How do we get to $4,800? Well, that was my deposit, which was two months, two months rent. Rent, okay. So um, that's a lot of money for a teacher. And where do you live now? And I moved, like, to the next town. Oh, so you live in a whole new town. Yeah, I okay. didn't want and to And do be. you like your new residence, ma'am? I do. It's comfortable? I do, but quiet. It's, I'm paying more than I wanted to. I would have loved to stay in the duplex. Okay. That would perfect for me. <gasps> right. Um, and so I feel like he owes me that money because it's his fault that I moved. I didn't so, affect the... Well, so you're saying that you had to pay $2,400 first month rent and deposit. That's standard. And let me get to you, Mr. Uh, landlord, Mr. Reese here. You did not return that first month rent and deposit because she broke the lease early. Is that correct? Respectfully, no way, Your Honor. No way I'm going to return that. Right. Okay. How short was she on the lease, sir? <sighs> I, I, you know, I don't recall exactly, but I but did. But it was she, before it was up. Yes, ma'am. It was most definitely before it was up. Mm -hmm. uh, and you concede the point that you, you did break the lease, ma'am. I did, but I reached out to both of them, and I was back and forth to my land, to Jeffrey, to Carl, and it was back and forth, back and forth, and neither one was helping. No answer I, would have satisfied you. Mr. Blunder. So, Ms. Tyler, the defendant says he kept the noise quieter. You're disputing that. You're saying it was still as loud as we heard in court today, and that was indeed loud. And so you make the decision, as is your right as an adult, to break this lease, vacate the premises early, and find comfortable accommodations. That's all I could do. Okay. I think the court has heard enough, and I'm ready to make a ruling. Judge Ebony's verdict when equal justice returns. This is Equal Justice. Mr. Blunder, I don't think I'd want to be your neighbor. Sounds like you got a lot going on. You got a bunch of animals. You got a parrot. You're playing the guitar. You're trying to learn how to sing. Sounds like it's a hot mess. But guess what? Because if your landlord, the actual owner of the property, finds your behavior reasonable, that is really the only controlling factor that the court must concern itself with. So the fact that you brought a witness in today that is both the owner of the property and the property manager, and this man is telling my courtroom that he finds your behavior reasonable, the court has to be consistent with that. So here's the thing, Ms. Tyler, I hear you. I appreciate your position. I understand being a business owner, uh, being a woman who's trying to make it post-pandemic. Uh, mm -hmm. I would not want to live next to this man either. Thank you. But this is where it's important to think about home ownership. Because when you own the property, you can exclusively dictate matters just like this. Noise ordinance, uh, the, you know, just the attire of, you know, the aesthetic of the property, all of these things which would then be under your domain. But because you don't own the property, the court rules in favor of the defendant. Mm. I'm dismissing the plaintiff's claim. That's my ruling. All rise. Judge Ebony has ruled in favor of the defendant. The plaintiff's claim is dismissed. You know, you need to grow up. That's what your problem is. Get over it, Josephine. No, just be a better person. You're just friend. irresponsible. You relax for you once. Just did whatever you could in front of her to make yourself look good. I forgot okay, guys, really. You've had your day in court. Please follow me. Thank you, sir. Ladies first. Hot mess. This has been a production of Allen Media Group.